The Earth's sea level is constantly increasing. A real flood may soon begin because since 1880 the world's ocean waters have risen an average of 8 to 9 inches. And a third of that figure, according to climate.gov climate change research portal, is made up of indicators over the past 25 years. The sea level directly depends on melting glaciers due to global warming. An increase in the planet temperature warms the oceans so the water volume also increases. Pumping of groundwater and sewage into the seas as a result of human activity also has a strong impact. The situation will only worsen in the future. According to NOAA estimates, U.S. water level will increase an average of another 10 to 12 inches by 2050. For some small islands and lowland coasts, a rise in the sea level poses an existential threat. According to experts, the consequences will initially be felt by small island states. Soon Kiribati, Marshall Islands, Hawaii, Maldives may be flooded. Floods will scare away tourists who are an important source of income for local residents. In addition, natural disasters will destroy the infrastructure and destroy crops in the fields. But the islands are not the only problem. Sea level rise will also hurt the infrastructure of coastal cities, which are often home to millions of people. South Korea may particularly be at risk. This country's coastline is huge, as much as 2,413 kilometers. There are many large cities near the ocean in South Korea, which will be the first to suffer when the sea level rises. The coastal Busan metropolis is among them. It is the largest port and the second largest city in the country with a population of 3.5 million people. Busan is overcrowded because the city covers an area of only 770 square kilometers. This is 0.8% of the total land area of the Korean peninsula. In terms of population density, the metropolis is in second place, giving the first place to the capital of the country, Seoul. However, the number of citizens continues to grow. Busan attracts people with a developed service sector and modern infrastructure. In addition, the city is among the top 10 world leaders when it comes to hosting international conferences and festivals. But most importantly, there is a huge port complex in Busan which combines four ports at once. All this makes the metropolis the most suitable place to deploy a floating city prototype. These are the words of the authors of the innovative settlement on the water. The project was developed by Oceanics, UN Habitat and their partners in collaboration with the Busan City Hall. UN Habitat is the United Nations Human Settlements Program that works to make these visions a reality. In turn, New York-based Oceanics designs and builds floating cities in more than 90 countries. This company uses organic materials and strives to combine the architectural form's harmony with ocean landscapes. The company has designed the Oceanics Busan project of sustainable floating city. When the sea level rises, it will not sink but simply begin to rise along with the water. The city will be located on platforms made of bio-rock material. It is produced by using unique ocean technology from marine materials and microorganisms. In fact, bio-rock is alive. It grows and regenerates on its own in case of damage. At the same time, the material is harder than concrete but has buoyant properties. Three platforms with a total area of 15.5 acres will be built from bio-rock. The modular construction will be able to accommodate 12,000 residents. If necessary, it will be expanded to 20 or more platforms. There will be buildings on each of the platforms no more than five floors high, from light-weighted and environmentally friendly varieties of wood and bamboo. All houses will be located in interconnected neighborhoods with many picturesque terraces. In general, buildings will harmoniously fit into the city architecture. A large embankment and bridges, including Busan, will allow you to admire the magnificent seascapes. According to the project authors, each platform with an area of 30,000 to 40,000 square meters will be designed for a specific purpose. One will be residential, another will be for the purpose of research, and the third will be intended to accommodate visitors. In the residential sector, the focus will be on amenities for citizens. Here, everyone can choose accommodation to their taste, in a secluded lane or a noisy quarter with entertainment venues and many shops. The research platform will become a hub for offshore development, thereby creating workplaces for many citizens. 
tourists will be able to find accommodation on the third platform. The completely eco-friendly accommodation, organic restaurants and shops will attract tourists. Floating gardens, greenhouses and oceanic spoos on farms will provide these establishments with natural and fresh food. A temperature-controlled environment and special systems with purified water will be developed throughout the city. Only the green energy of the sun, water and wind of Oceanics Busan's own systems will be used for this. There will be no cars polluting the air, because the platforms are easy to navigate on foot or by bicycle. Of course, there are already enough people who want to settle in such a stunning place. According to the builder's plan, they will not have to wait long. Oceanics Busan construction will begin in 2023. In 2035, a fully equipped city will sway smoothly on the sea waves. South Korea's incredible plan to build a floating city has been praised by the UN and suggested for implementation by other countries. However, there are other amazing ideas in the world to prevent sea level rise. The Kiribati authorities want to raise all their islands above the ocean. To do this, it is planned to carry out large-scale dredging works and build breakwaters. No doubt, such scalable projects will help mitigate the effects of floods. But the most reliable solution for all of us will be a complete victory over global warming. Then, you will not be afraid of the global flood and the catastrophe it can cause.